You could spend money on ads, try to grow your Instagram following and add new products and services, or you could increase the conversion rate of the traffic and the audience you already have. That's what I'm showing you in today's video. So herein lies the magic of a conversion rate. None of those marketing strategies that I just mentioned are bad. In fact, I love them all, I use them all. But what if we focused on optimizing what is already there and sitting in your lap? If we try to figure out ways that we could capture and convert your existing traffic and existing customers. So in your creative small business, revenue is the number one metric to measuring the success of the business. I feel like this can kind of be a sticky subject in the realm of creative entrepreneurs that I work in um, because things like impact and beauty are so important to us. But hear me out when we're just looking at the numbers and the metrics. That is so important. It's your revenue and more specifically profit that proves how successful the business is. But the next best factor or metric you wanna look at is your conversion rate. A conversion is what happens when somebody takes the action that you want them to take. Maybe it's signing up for your email list or filling out your contact form, purchasing one of your digital downloads or purchasing one of your one of a kind handmade pieces of jewelry. And in case you didn't know, here is how you calculate your conversion rate. Let's do a little math. So say your services page on your website had 450 visitors last month and 18 people scrolled down to the bottom and filled out that contact form to inquire and get in touch with you about your photography services. That's a conversion rate of 4%. Now, conversion rates differ wildly depending on the conversion goal. I just gave you a couple of examples of those, like signing up for your email list, downloading something, actually purchasing. But according to crazyegg.com, the average conversion rate for a website hovers around 2.5%. Now there are a few factors to making sure your website stands out and it is converting at the highest conversion rate possible. So today I wanna to show you five conversion strategies that you can implement on your website to up that conversion rate. Hit that like button if you're excited and maybe even ready to bump that little number up a little bit more. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when these videos drop every Tuesday. Did you do that? Okay, let's jump in. The first thing is analyzing your website data. So before you throw your hands up in the air and say, my new copy that I worked so hard on isn't converting or all of that brand imagery and photography I just shelled out for, that's not working, my new website template isn't working, we have to actually look at the data and see where is the leak or the gap in your current sales funnel and then assess that. Where are people actually landing and where are they falling off? So if this is an example of your sales funnel, where in this do we need to grease the slide a little bit more and figure out why they're not getting to the next step in your funnel? You may have heard me say that I like to help creatives work from a place of rest, not hustle before, and it is because I deeply, deeply believe it. Your website, and specifically to what you guys know I like to talk about, if your copy isn't working 24 seven for you, pulling its weight and helping people go down this funnel, whether it's one-on-one -on -one services or products products that you offer, then we need to stop and figure that out because you're busy, right? You're actually doing your craft, your work, your client work. You don't have time to sit there and sell 24 seven. Your website has got to be doing it for you. So before we go any further, let's pause and I want you to think about your homepage. If your reader does absolutely nothing else, what is the one action that you want them to take on your homepage before they X out that tab and go on to do whatever else they were gonna do? I've had to sit down and reassess this lately in my own business, more on that in a minute, but I wanna know, comment below, what is the one action that you want people to take on your homepage? Caveat, I want you to start this with an action verb. I don't wanna hear something like, no, I am a really talented calligrapher, but I want you to get specific. Do you want them to go to your services page? Do you want them to get on your email list. What is that one goal? Okay, do you have that? Let's talk about the things that you need to look for when you jump into your analytics and look for specific patterns. So if you're just getting started looking at your Google Analytics, you want to go ahead and start simple. And the first thing that you typically want to identify is on um, top pages. So this is a real behind the scenes peek inside our Google Analytics. And I'm gonna come over here to behavior, open this drawer, go to site content. And what I wanna look at here is the landing pages. So when you click on this, you can see the top pages on your website. This is the past week, right? Yeah, oh, yep, yeah, six, seven days. So um, what's so interesting is you can see what pages you need to optimize because they are people are landing on them the most okay heads up this how to make a wedding guest spreadsheet I wrote 
like back when I started my calligraphy business, it's still, because it like went a little viral on Pinterest, it still brings in so much traffic. So one way that we've been looking at optimizing this since my audience has changed from serving brides in a one-on-one -on -one capacity as a wedding calligrapher and stationer to educating creative entrepreneurs is how can I use this page and then rework it for the audience? Does that make sense? So like that's an example of um, like optimizing this existing traffic and making it work and funnel into my business now. Um, these are some other examples of landing pages that I want to look into and that we're working on optimizing. And using these as a benchmark, you also want to identify places where people commonly exit. So I'm going to come down to exit pages. And here I can see some lower performing pages that that, um, may be missing some capturing opportunities. Um, so this is interesting. This is a thank you page. So after you hop in with an opt-in, um, you get shuffled off to this page. What am I not doing here? Look, 115 people left after this page. What can I do to make this page stickier and provide other opportunities and resources to help get people what they were looking for or what they need? Um, that's an opportunity of that. So this is just a briefing of um, Google Analytics that you can use and look at in your own business. As you're in here, you want to make note of other things. Are they even hitting your contact page? Where are people coming from? Referral sources can tell you a lot about the messaging that people may be looking to see when they land on your website. How are people finding your site? Put on your scientist cap and figure out what kind of trends and patterns are you seeing. Now, Hotjar has a pretty cool tool available on their free tier of pricing, which is pretty great. You can use it to investigate your sales funnel a little bit more and see where in that you may be losing people due to a leak or a gap. Let me show you what that looks like. The tool called Hotjar, and this is the homepage of it. I just wanted you to see this. Again, they have great opportunities um, for like minimal testing on their free level. So I would recommend that if you're a creative entrepreneur, um, your business is you know substantial but not ginormous. Um, it's you can get enough insights and things done to make some changes. So I really recommend that. Now what I wanted to show you is in here. So building a funnel, and I already started a little bit, so you could see. Um, but what I would do is click over to funnels and start a new funnel, and we're just going to tell this. So this is going to be, um, let's, we want to be looking at launch application submissions. Okay. So these are launch copy application submissions. These are the clients that are coming in and wanting to work in this capacity. So let's say homepage, mm, it would be a blog too. Let's actually, I'm going to take that one out because I want them to go to the services page, which is And then after they go there, I'm going to do exact match on that. Um, I want them to go to launch copy page. Ex oops, nope, exact match on this too. See how I'm entering the URLs here? And the URL for this is launch copy. And then I'm going to add one more step, and it's the application. Okay, so what this can do now is measure um, the people that are going through these steps and I can see where the drop off is. My students inside Copywriting for Creatives know that I like to start with the quantitative data first when we're talking about optimizing your website, whether that is Google Analytics or heat maps, the data doesn't lie, numbers don't lie. But after you look at the data and the numbers, you could do one of two things. Door number one, you could go in and change what you think it may be a good idea to shift up or play with. Maybe you wanna add more icons and graphics or beef up your portfolio a little bit more on your services page. Maybe you wanna flesh it out with some more testimonials. You could do all this, not bad things, and hope sales go up, or you could do what is behind door number two. You could start like we just did, figuring out where the biggest drop off is or where that flow gets stuck and once you understand where the problem is then you get to play with what the problem is behind door number two is really seeking to understand your customers better their needs what is causing them to hesitate or come up with objections what are those conversations that are going on in their mind and then you can make adjustments off that now how many of us are doing what was behind door number one it's okay, no shame there. So many of us, especially as creatives, I think, are guilty of making minor, minor tweaks and changes on our website. Maybe it's updating little photos or tweaking our about page. But there are some more tactical, needle-moving things you can do, which brings us to step number two in optimizing your website. Obsess over your users. Now, sometimes the very best conversion tools are free. Listening, right? Asking that potential new client, 
What was it about your calligraphy services that made her reach out and want to work with you? If you're a creative director, how did a potential new client hear about and want to work with you? Even watching and listening to a new website design client as they go through your onboarding process, they look at your proposal and they come back with questions, what are they saying back to you? So looking at our analytics, what we did in step one, that's quantitative, right? We're looking at numbers, stats, bounce rates. My students inside Copywriting for Creatives know that I love to teach you how to use and look at things like heat maps, scroll maps, and split testing. Those are all examples of quantitative data. But the qualitative data is the really juicy stuff that gives us the why behind those numbers and statistics. Now the easiest way to do this is like I just said, listen. But a super fun way to collect data, I am the biggest nerd, at least I think it's fun. <laughs> a way that you can collect data like this is using different website feedback tools and user testing. So I'm gonna do a quick screencast so you can see this in action and use it to your advantage. When you go to usertesting.com, this is the page that you're gonna see and all I want you to do, I hope this is okay to say, but you can do great with just a trial. So if you're just testing your website and not doing this for clients, that's what I would recommend that you do. So you're going to create a uh, a new account and request trial. And then let me show you in, I created a dummy account, what that looks like on the back end. So you can do this just for about seven days, which gives you enough time to test your own website. And let me show you how that works. Once you're in the dashboard, this is what you'll see. And I want you to come over here and click new, and you're just going to create a new test, test a website, and now you get to rocking and rolling. So what you can do first is select your participants. And I would go ahead and recommend, um, you're gonna need to bump this down to three during your trial, if that's what you're doing. Um, and I mean, I would probably do some smartphone, some computer, um, either way, either way is fine. Smartphone would definitely be nice to test some mobile. Uh, but after this, you can go ahead and trim down. Now you will see there's a lot of features, like the good features, of course, you need to pay for. But basically, age and gender, probably things that you're gonna want to bring into what's closer to your target market, especially um, if you're a creative industry that targets a certain group of people, you'll want to do that. So let's set this. And then the next thing that you do is start building out the test itself. So you can type in the name of your website here. If you wanna give them a little bit more information, you can do that as well. And then just start dropping in what you want them to do. You may have to play with this for a sec before you start to understand how it works, but you can have them give them different things to do. I like this section that has popular examples. You can choose questions. So if you're kind of stuck on what to do, I would recommend that you pop into here and grab a few of those. But essentially you build out this test plan. Now it's going to give you a couple of different options. So make sure you have enough things in there. It's going to do it um, like an AB test and a BA test. You'll again, once you hop in, you can really see how this works a little bit more. But once you have the test together, you can roll with it. Once you submit your test, you can get the response back very quickly, like within less than 24 hours. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. Again, I did this test run to preview what this looks like on a um, just a sample account. So this is an account I would recommend, again, unless you're doing this for lots of clients and you really need it as part of your business. Um, it's a little expensive, so you can just do the test drive. So I did that to see if, I could, if it works the same, and it does. And this is the response that you get back. So then you can go in and actually watch these videos of what people are saying as they look at your website. This part pretty much looks the same as the paid version, which I like. I went ahead and can still make notes over here of the things that I listened throughout. You can speed it up, which can be helpful because they tend to be sometimes a little longish. Uh, but once you play the video, you can hear exactly what happens as they go through the test that you set them up for and get the best feedback in the world. Have you ever heard that before that assuming only makes a of you and me? After we look at all that data in step one, we don't wanna assume anything and that's why step two here is so important. Plus, what I love so much about user feedback is that it shakes me out of the rut of being so in love with my own ideas. Website recording sessions will straight up remind you that if it is not clear to your user, it doesn't matter. The third way to optimizing your website is making sure that it loads fast and it's bug free. You may think your website looks so good, and it probably does when you're looking at it with your browser and your MacBook after you've got all the imagery and copy plugged in, but we can't forget about this step. 
Now I mentioned mobile optimization in last week's video. I'll link it below. But in today's video, I'm going to do a little screencast of some ways that you can make sure that this is buttoned up and something like load time isn't the reason that a reader or a user has bounced from your website. Because especially as creative entrepreneurs, a lot of us have pretty big files. We have large images, we have our portfolio work, and all of that is on our website. But we want to make sure things aren't loading quickly so we can capture your audience's attention and convert them by making them do that one thing that you told me that you want your homepage to do. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I haven't looked at this in a long time on different devices, so we're going to see how this goes. So this is a um, this is my productivity course. Uh, this is the closed page, so it is um, not open right now. It's waitlist only, so that's what that page looks like. Let's look at it on a different device. So I'm going to left click or double click if you're on a um, Mac or a laptop. Come down to inspect, and once I open that up, this comes up, this very techy looking thing. And what we want to do is make sure, see this little toggle device toolbar, see how that's clicked? When that is open, I can see what this looks like on different devices. So right now it's in responsive mode. I'm going to come over here, let's say iPhone 10. Okay, so it's going to pull it down to those sizes, and now I can scroll through and look and see what it looks like there. See how interesting that is? So maybe let's see if we can do it iPad. You can see what things look like there. So on and so forth. So that's a great tip that you can use to go in and look at different pages and see what they look like on different devices. This is how I run a quick speed audit of my website to make sure it's not something like load time that's holding me back. Okay, we're back in good old Google Analytics. And for this, I wanna come over and open this behavior tab and go down to site speed. Pretty easy. And then from there, speed suggestions. So what I wanna look at here are, these, these are the top pages that have been trafficked in the past like six days. And what I wanna look at is the load time over here. So that backslash, that's the homepage. Um, it's some people, it's, Sometimes there's that backslash there. So that's what that is. But the rest of these, um, wow, we have a lot of really telling information here. So if a site loads like within three seconds, I think that's pretty good. Up to seven though is kind of considered normal, especially with the amounts of images these days on websites. But over seven are the ones that I want to look at, specifically like this one and this one. So these two are blogs. They are blogs that have video content and lots of imagery. And so this is one thing that I'm going to look at and try to investigate. How can I shrink some of the images here? How can I make these pages load faster? So here's a little image shrinking hack that I do. If I have a big image, say that a photographer has shot for me, I'll pull it up and then just screenshot the portion that I need for my website and rename that with an SEO file name and load that in. There's also great tools out there like Blogstomp. My friends Krista and Davy Jones did a great YouTube tutorial on shrinking images, so I'll link that below as a resource for you. If you have a favorite tool that you use to shrink and optimize your images, would you comment below and leave it? I wanna make sure that we can learn from one another and get new ideas, so if you have one that you love, let us know. One more quick tip, don't forget to check these two things, mobile optimization and load time for ancillary pages that you may be using with your website. I one time was using lead pages and didn't realize that on certain browsers, when you tried to scroll down, the call to action button wouldn't come above the fold, so no one was clicking, so it wasn't converting. Because I was looking at things on my phone with my browser, I didn't see that, and it took a user to point that out to me. I learned the hard way, so don't forget to check this on any other pages that you may be using associated with your website. I hope that makes sense. Step number four to optimizing your website is leveraging SEO. Now in today's video, I'm not gonna do a deep dive into this because I did it last week. It's definitely an entire tutorial, like a 20 minute mini course on it. So I'll link that below and you can go and check that out after this video. Conversion optimization and SEO have a very intertwined relationship. They rely on one another to function properly. So we don't wanna leave that out. And finally, step number five to upping your conversion rates is updating the copy to be more user focused. Whether you're already a pretty dang good DIY copywriter for your creative small business, or you're just getting started trying to figure out what to say and when to say it, I wanna show you exactly what I mean here by using my own homepage as a case study. I just recently optimized the copy and the content on the homepage of my website. 
It was working okay, but naturally I wanted to see if I could make it work a little bit better and here's what I learned. This is super interesting to me because I think it proves that no matter where you fall on the copywriting spectrum, you need somebody's eye to come in and look at what you've done. My coaches gave me some incredible feedback on my website copy and this is why I'm so passionate about the private community of copywriting for creative students that we have. Because if we're not able to ask others, am I being clear here? Is my value proposition shining through? Or was this written to my one reader? Then we don't know. We can't create stuff in a vacuum. And yes, there's screencasts for this too, so let's look at the screen. A few quick tweaks that I made. I pulled up um, in Wayback Machine the initial page, and what I wanted to show you were these changes here. So do you see this? Uh, kind of a headline. This is eyebrow copy right here. Um, look at that and then versus what it is changed to. So it is super user focused here. And um, I mean, this was fine. It was this for a really long time, but might as well get specific. Plus sometimes my audience doesn't know what this is right off the bat. So I need to go ahead and speak straight to them. Um, I also tried to define what I do a little bit more, do a lot of things, but I'm trying to do that um, as well. Now you'll also see this call to action button. See how we changed that to be a little more user focused. And one other big change was uh, moving this up a lot more in the page. So in the other page, it was down at the bottom, which heat maps were pretty interesting to look at for that converted okay, but I'm hoping that I can get it um, in front sooner and help push them into some of the big things. Services, YouTube, blog. Now, when it comes to optimizing your website, there is no one best practice or magical template or copywriting formula that is going to be a blanket fix every single time. I've heard it said before, and I truly believe it, that best practices can so oftentimes be pooled ignorance. For every best practice that you find and show me, I can give you a client example when we did that and it didn't work or when we tried the opposite and that worked better. I'm telling you this because you have to do this kind of work for your audience and your business. And I promise you that no matter where you are in this journey, it's possible. I'm teaching a free hour long workshop that is a bit of a deeper dive into the stuff that we've talked about today called Separate Yourself from the Pack, How to Write Your Website Words. Thousands of creatives have joined me, put into practice the things that I teach and grown their creative businesses. Head to ashlynwrites.com slash masterclass or look below for the link and grab your seat. Shout out to Molly Marshall Marketing who recently made me smile with the comment that she wrote below the video. If you wanna get a shout out like this, then just comment below what was your biggest takeaway from today's tutorial. Now that you have these tips and tricks up your sleeve, be sure to stay tuned for the next video where I'm talking a little bit more about the SEO that you can use for your creative small business. If you haven't subscribed yet, like I said, what are you waiting for? Subscribe below and hit that like button if this helped you out. I'll see you in that free workshop and see you in the next video as well.